It was brought up in, in Orkney. It's a small town just out of, out of Clarkstop. Um, I grew up there. At that stage, all of us played rugby and cricket. That was your sport in the old days. Um, in primary school, I played uh, for the first team from Standard 2. And then I went to Technical High School. I played here from Standard 8 for the first team. And uh, in matric, I got my Western Transvaal colours at that stage. So, uh, and then just before the Kramer Week, I got injured with my ankle. So I couldn't go. So I didn't go to the Kramer Week. Uh, bad luck for me. <laughs> I stayed in Orkney until I got matric. And then after that, I went to um, the old Val Reeves mine in Orkney. And that's where I got injured. I was three weeks on the mine, 18 years old. And uh, we had a rock fall on the ground. And I broke my back. And then from 1990, I was in a wheelchair. In the beginning, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I, I, I was very cross because uh, it was a stupid accident. But after a while, I went to the Lord and He helped me. He helped me through it to me, and my wife. And after a while, uh, when Sizzle met Lydia, it was quite good. And all the other things changed then. In the beginning, it was quite a lot of people that support us, help us with this thing. I think the best thing that, that happened is when I just got, get, got out of um, the hospital after the operation, I went back home. And uh, we've got a, in Clarks over here, we've got a home for disabled people. So I was sitting at home, my dad got from, back from work and he told me to come get, get into the car. So, okay, where are we going now? So we left and we stopped at that house and uh, he dropped me off and he introduced me to one of the guys there and he left. And I said, where are going? No, no, he'll come and pick me up tonight. So I was sitting there talking to all these guys and at that stage there was a lot of guys that were drinking and smoking. That's all that they did. And when he came and picked me up, I said to him, please, never again. And I think that they helped me a lot with psych psychologically. With um, I know what they're doing, what, what, that's, the, that's the bad part of it. And then after that, start working, gymming and all those stuff. Just went on normal without walking. Marius Kunig is what our manager is. He's been, been part of basketball for many, many years. So he has always told my, my brother, please let him come and play, let him come and play. And, okay, yeah, I'll come. And then I uh, got to a practice at one stage, looked at the guys and says, this is not for me. And then I left, and that was in 95. And then in 99, uh, Joppi Victor was still playing for Angle Gold. I went with him to a practice. When I just, okay, I'll start playing now, he told me now he's leaving for Pretoria. So I said, okay, no, I'm not gonna play anymore. <laughs> and then I met my wife, and then she started, I must go and, go and play basketball. And she actually introduced me to basketball with Marius Kunig. And then, uh, well, that's history. If you're paraplegic and you add as that background, I think it's easier for you to get into wheelchair basketball because you know how to move your chair. Uh, with an able-bodied guy or a guy that's got polio or whatever, you must still learn how to use the wheelchair and, and play with a ball. Uh, in the beginning, it was difficult uh, because you was just you, you're turning and then you must catch a ball and you must drive with the ball and, um, and it's difficult. Um, but I've been had good trainers with me uh, for the last 12 years. Um, being part of the national team from 2009, I had very really good uh, coaches with me that, that teach me a lot. Uh, Sizzle was good in rugby when he was young. He was a good rugby player. And when he got hurt, I was upset because his sport stopped. But when he went to ba wheelchair basketball, uh, it started getting better. In, in the beginning, I was, I think he wouldn't make it because he was too slow. <laughs> but after a while, uh, when he, he, he starts playing with the people, he starts getting better. Every year, he, he got better and better. But now he's good. Well, I'm classified as a low pointer. And previous years, your low pointers would just pick and do seals for your high pointers to get into the key and put him to score. The game has changed so much that Everybody must score now. So I think as a as a low pointer and as as a big low pointer, 
um, they call me a power forward at, at this stage, not a low point anymore, is that you must get into the game, you must score. And I think personally that's at this stage where I, why I am the best one and a half in the country because I can do the pick and seal for the high pointers. I, my defense is very good. Uh, I think my defense is one of my strongest points. But when I get into the key, you must score. When you're outside, you must score. And I think previous years, the, the low pointers were very afraid of shooting. Today, it's a different story. Everybody must shoot now.